Hi, I'm Glena Winecoop, and this is my story map, Roadside Angel. It's a story about a boy, an injury, and an angel appearing by the roadside. But first, before we start, I need to give some context. This is a story about something that happened to my great-grandfather when he was a boy. As of right now, he's 84 years old and was born in 1927. Keeping that in mind, all of these locations on this map are kind of fudged because even if they did exist today, my grandfather, this happened to him over 60 years ago, he doesn't even remember if he was billed, let alone if he went to so-and-so locations. So all of these locations are just approximated based on real world locations. So any of the places you see there, for all I know, they were the right place, but probably not. Moving on, he grew up in Vernonia, Oregon, and was a logger for most of his life. And, as you'll find later in the story, what happened to him was nothing short of a miracle. So, this story, I could tell it to you through my own words, from my own mouth, but I think, for most of it, I'll let Grandpa tell you in his own words. Shall we go? So in the summer of 1940, a boy had a mysterious encounter with an angel who saved his life. Now old, the man once again tells his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren the memory of a mysterious angel he never saw again. Well, I, I was jumping back fences. We had four foot high picket fences. And the one coming into our yard, I caught my toe and came down on a broken jar, just inside. How old were you? I was 13, just almost 13. And uh, my Aunt Mabel was the only one at the house and she, could need, she couldn't hear and she couldn't speak. And she just handed me a towel, and I just wrapped it around and went out and stood by the road. I was standing there bleeding, and this car pulled up. The guy reached over and opened the door and said, get in. I said, I'm going to get blood all over your car. He said, get in. And he drove me to the doctor's office and stopped in front and let me out. And he was gone. Never saw him again. Never saw him again. And I called him my angel. No one knew who he was, where he came from, or where he went but he saved my life. I found out later this, he said, uh, when I, he started to work on it, he said, I can't give you any kind of anesthetic because I have to be able to see which tenon goes where. So you have to wiggle your finger. So that's the way, the first 45 minutes, it was pretty painful. But after that, it didn't bother me that much. So I watched him do that. He did send his receptionist out to get some gum and gave me two sticks of gum to chew while he was working on it. And it was kind of an interesting uh, thing. Uh, when, I, uh, when he finished, he put a cast on it and sent me home. 
and never, I never had any medication for pain or anything. Now all we had was aspirin. You were telling me this morning, then you went and played in the river with your cast, right? I did. <laughs> Everybody, it was summertime, every, all the kids were swimming and the Nahalem River ran right behind our house. So I figured I can get in water and hold my arm out and swim, but didn't work. that didn't work. I went back to the doctor and he put a new cast on. He said, if you get this one wet, I'm going to cut your arm off. <laughs> <laughs> now, what did you find out about the doctor? I found out uh, later that he graduated at the top of his class in surgery from Harvard Medical School but he had a drinking problem and he refused to take the cure. So he took this small log in town as a private practice. Figured a bunch of loggers are not going to care if I'm drunk. <laughs> but I found out from uh, Dr. Marion Mayo, who was married to one of the Mayo Clinic doctors, that he was probably, at that time, the only one north of San Francisco who could have put that together in his office like that. So, one thing I would like to point out that you might have noticed in all of these recordings is that Grandpa still has that scar on his arm. It's... It was really big and very bad. If he hadn't gone to the doctor when he did, he probably wouldn't have survived. And even if he did survive, use of his hand would probably be little to none. He still has trouble feeling some textures, such as leather. He can't feel the texture of the couch, for example. So, that was just a very big thing that happens that we've always heard about. And among the many stories my family has been told over the generations, this is definitely one of the most beloved and favorite of all of them. In his older years, we try to take the time to listen to what he has to say as if it's our last time to hear it, because for all we know, it really is. He's not getting any younger and he's very old. Grandpa also told us about other times when angels found him. In this one story, an angel found him, an injured small boy in a small house in a small town, and took him to the one person who could possibly help him in time. But even if we don't know who this angel is, we still thank him. There are also, seeming from what he's told us, two other instances when angels have saved him. Maybe they were the same one. Story for another time, perhaps. <laughs>